Recently in FIFA 23 career mode, Joe Bellingham, Jude Bellingham's younger brother, has been added into the game. He's officially now in FIFA and that's got me thinking, what if we take over the Bellingham brothers' careers and allow them to join forces on the same teams for the next 10 years? That means at club level, on the international stage, it's a family affair. This brother midfield combination will be linking up for the foreseeable future. If you're new here on this channel, we usually love putting brothers up against each other, making them compete to be the best. But today, we're forcing the Bellinghams to work together and cooperate in order to achieve success. For the purposes of today's video, we'll be starting off at Borussia Dortmund, allowing them to have an initial starting point here in the Bundesliga. Because let's face it, Jude's not backtracking and returning to the championship. We're going to throw Job in the deep end and force his younger brother to play up. In terms of comparison, their names are pretty similar. I mean, the Bellinghams could have put a little bit more creativity into their younger son's name. They're both centre midfielders. How are the Bellinghams? Bellingham Jr. is also a little bit more of an advanced playmaker. He can play at center attack in midfield and he's three years younger. No traits or specialities, pretty mediocre stats. I mean, 58 overall. It's going to be a long wait to see him climb up to the quality that Jude Bellingham has right now. And for 600k, Birmingham City are about to secure another bag for selling a Bellingham. It is signed, sealed, and delivered just like that. He joins his older brother here in Germany. But I'm yet to explain what kind of rules we have in place. If either of the Bellingham brothers receive any offers and we accept them, the other one must follow and join them. No matter where they are, at the stage of their careers, how they're performing, they will follow each other everywhere, no matter how many transfers it takes. Because there is such a stark contrast in quality right now, we can guarantee for the next 10 years the Bellingham brothers will be sticking by each other's sides. And if a club decides to sign one, they're going to also receive the other. It's a rough start for our boy as he instantly becomes the worst player at the club, ranked bottom of the roster. Currently with a potential of 81, the 16-year-old's got a lot to prove. Let's hope he doesn't fall by the wayside and land in his big brother's shadow. Jude is just untouchable right now. Coming off a World Cup, has potential to be special. He's England's golden boy right now, but there is always room to improve. On the training ground, his development plan is going to be box to box. Hopefully going to transform him into an absolute machine running the show in the midfield. And for the younger half, I'm expecting a little bit more of a playmaker role. I just want to straight up convert him into a cam and then train him at the playmaker development plan. They are worlds apart in quality right now. 26 overall points away from each other is the current margin. This is how they would be lining up in the Borussia Dortmund starting 11, at least for the first season. We won't listen to any offers. Establish a decent foundation between the two. Hopefully just get off to the right start here at the Signal Duna Park. We're going to make Jude the captain just so the older brother can get that authority and boss his little bro around. He doesn't have that many things going for him. No face scan in the game, but at least EA have looked him up with a 2D profile pick. He's just under six foot, but don't worry, Job, I'll be claiming six foot if I were you. At 5'11", it hasn't taken us long to fully convert him to a center attacking midfielder. It's already seen a plus one upgrade, and now we're training him as an advanced playmaker for the rest of season one. I knew the interest was there early doors, and it's the Premier League calling. I knew we'd get offers straight away, but we're just gonna be out here rejecting at least for season one, maybe even for season two. 84.4 million pounds. Yeah, get out of here, Pep. We are having any of it. So a BCHD is here to improve the Bellingham cause and the Bellingham cause only. So let's get this career simulation underway for season one. First season is in the books for the Bellingham brothers at BVB and they finish in fourth place. Not necessarily title challenges as RB Leipzig take home the German crown but at least they finish in a Champions League spot. It's respectable. No silverware to claim domestically as in the DFB Pokal they were eliminated quite early on in round three to Hoffenheim 2-1. I take that back. Actually they claim the German Super Cup. The charity shield, if you will, before the season kicked off. 4-2 against Bayern. So at least they've earned one trophy to celebrate together as in the Champions League, they were eliminated in the group stage, getting knocked down to the Europa. And things didn't go as planned. Europe didn't treat them quite as kindly, getting knocked out to Dynamo Kiev. 5-3 on aggregate. However, it's all about the brothers' performance. Let's see if the Bellinghams lived up to the hype and if Job is still bottom of the pack and he is. Despite a season of plus 5 overall growth and he is showing great potential, turning 17 years of age and now stands at a 63 rating. Whilst his big brother also received a plus 5 growth, it's still a 26 point gap. He still has potential to be special and he has yet to turn 20. Captain Jude is absolutely tearing it up with 19 goals and 7 assists from our box to box midfielder. He made nearly double the appearances than Job with 5 goals and 9 assists. Still some decent production for the teenager and with 14 goal contributions, he definitely played a part. No light green stats to boast about yet. 
However, five star weak foot has been attained. Working on that attack and work rate for season two, as Judy is on the verge of becoming a world class baller already and could literally be considered for the Ballon d'Or in the next few seasons. Dark Green's literally beaming off the page, and I've got to even cover his stats. He's got dives into tackles, leadership flair, and technical dribbler. All in his locker, all at his disposal, and the English hype has well and truly taken off. Join the hype train, otherwise, it's going to leave you behind. Now valued on the transfer market at 109 million pounds. Whilst on the other end of the spectrum, he might be the worst overall rated player at the club. However, he is valued at 1.3 million pounds, celebrating those small wins and earning himself an 136% increase. It's kind of tough to compare Job and Jude, both at different stages of their career, only being three years apart. For the time being, they'll be partnering up in the BVB midfield, trying to attain as many trophies as possible along the way. As for season two, if no other offers come through, they're going to give it another go here in Germany. It's time in a new season. They deserve a new contract, hooking them up with a brand new deal. Both the brothers are getting pay rises, one a little bit more deserved than the other. As the brotherly bond continues to grow, this is how the team is looking for season two. They've got young on the rise wonder kids surrounding them. They've got a youthful Bellingham spine to drive the attack forward. This Dortmund team has everything going for it. Let's see what they can conjure up in their second campaign together. Season two is over and the Bellingham boys have wreaked havoc on the Bundesliga, achieving conquest of the top flight with 90 points, taking home the title, completely destroying the competition like RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich. What is going on? I think we have cracked the code. As over in the German Cup, the DFB Pokal, they were unable to attain that as in the quarterfinals, they were knocked out to Union Berlin 2-1. And simultaneously, they improved their continental performances, getting knocked out in the quarterfinals 4-2 to Real Madrid, but making a pretty decent Champions League run. At least they got out the group this time. Being in more competitions with more games, there were more opportunities for the likes of the Bellinghams to improve and grow this year as finally our boy Job isn't the worst player in the team anymore. He has climbed up the roster ranks to be the fifth worst. It's improvement nonetheless, achieving a plus six growth now standing at a 69 rating, still showing great potential and has turned 18. Meanwhile, his big brother is leading the pack right now. Age 20, the captain is one of the world's best and he gained that plus two, now hitting a 91 overall. Six of the most important members here at BVB as 33 appearances saw six goals and 11 assists for Job. Meanwhile, Jude got himself 15 goals and six assists, getting that 7.2 average match rating. We're getting 17 goal contributions from a 69 rated player and then compare that to 21 from a 91 rated player. Just to showcase that quality wise, they are worlds apart. But in terms of production, they're on a pretty similar playing field as this season, the Dynamo development plan was applied to Job. Now he sees ball control, dribbling, short passing, and a whole bunch of physical attributes being the light green. He's improving at a rapid rate, and so is Jude Bellingham, just propelling himself into that world-class stratosphere. A perfect role model and a blueprint for his brother to follow. He was training as a playmaker with these development plans. Now valued at 126 million pounds, well and truly cracking into the nine-figure range. And Job's on the come up, pretty much doubling last year's valuation, now standing at three million pounds. Trust me, he's well and truly on his way. With the 2024 Euros underway, Southgate has named his squad and only one of the Bellingham brothers have made it into the national team setup. I think you can guess who it is. Bellingham out to represent the three Lions, trying to take it home. However, that leaves Job the time to improve and wait until the 2026 World Cup if he wants a call up. With season three fast approaching, the Bellingham brothers have made themselves German champions. It might be time for a move. However, the international action is going on in the background. Euro 2024. Well, well, well. Can you believe it? The first time Bellingham has to go without his younger brother. He fails to make it out of the group stages here in the Euros. Placed into the group of death, only knocked out by goal difference, but they finished third in a group alongside Italy, Portugal, and Norway, so pretty harsh. The three Lions couldn't make it to the knockout rounds as it went on to be the Netherlands on penalties, getting revenge for 2010. Against Spain, they take home the trophy to become European champions with Van Gaal. Jude is back from international duty, unable to do his nation proud. Let's see on the club fronts if he gets any offers, or if any clubs are interested in Job, as his performances in the Euros were subpar at best, with three appearances, no goals, no assists. We can definitely say Southgate isn't getting the best out of him. This season, Jude's development plan will be applied as a central midfield, trying to get that five-star skill moves. Here with Job, he's already got five-star, five-star, high attack and work rate. We're going to keep things on dynamo. First offer of season three, Summer, has arrived, and it's for the big boy. It's Jude Bellingham, receiving a deal 82.9 million pounds. It's a swap deal initiated by the AI and the City of Love have come calling with Vitinha in the mix. I think 
we've just conquered Germany. Returning the boys back to the homeland would probably be the most realistic thing to do right here. So we're going to ignore that for now. Rejecting the puck that prompts hesitantly but appreciative of their offer. Here goes nothing. We got all we wish for. It's an offer from the Premier League as Spurs have come knocking. The trophyless club are after some gold and they are pursuing England's golden boy. Submitting a bid of 147.6 million pounds. Well and truly under his valuation. But I'm just going to go ahead and have to accept. If it's anyone that can win Tottenham a trophy, it's the Bellingham brothers. The season barely got itself underway as Job, who will be following him over to the Premier League, got two appearances and Jude managed one assist in also two appearances. There we have it. The deal has been finalised. Spurs snatching a bargain and unwillingly getting a second Bellingham brother to add to the roster. I can already see the Arsenal fans starting to clutch up, getting cringed out by Bellingham in a Spurs kit. I guess it's just things only possible in FIFA. The career simulation has has forced our hand. Just as promised, we're bringing his younger brother over, this time for significantly less of a transfer fee. Five million pounds was all it took for BVB to give up the other Bellingham. And I guess you can say they're reuniting here. The brotherly bond has formed back together and they are ready to take over England, ready to embark on a Premier League journey. As he takes the number 34. So here is how they'll be lining up in the starting 11 for Spurs in 2024. And would you look at that? They get to play a midfield role alongside each other. The brothers be in the main engine room in the middle of the park surrounded by some world-class talent. If these lads can't bring silverware to White Hart Lane, no one will. Whilst Jude arrives top of the pack, the best player in the squad by Country Mile. His younger brother, whilst not necessarily at the bottom, is climbing his way through the ranks. There's some good news behind this Spurs move. If you weren't the biggest fan, at least it has raised his potential status. He's got an upgrade now, gone from showing great potential to an exciting prospect. They are both operating on pretty much the exact same player instructions. Get forward, get into the box for crosses, normal interceptions, cover the centre defensive position and taking off their shackles allowing them to free roam. The Birmingham City fans might have a little bit of a problem with this one but we can officially say welcome back to England. From becoming Bundesliga champions to finishing fourth in the Premier League here for season three we've drawn the curtain on the Premier League campaign and they have been 11 points away from United at the summit still qualifying for Champions League football and finishing above Arsenal. However However, the hunt for a trophy continues as over in the FA Cup they were eliminated in the semi-finals 2-1 to Liverpool. The Carabao Cup also saw them fall at the quarter-final stage losing out 3-2 to Man United and the competition which the Bellinghams are fond of the Europa League which they were placed into Group C finished top of the group took down Fiorentina 3-2 on aggregate and then was eventually eliminated on penalties to Benfica 5-4. With the 2026 World Cup only a year away could the Bellingham duo be the key to England bringing it home. However, at 21 years of age, this is actually the first season that Bellingham hasn't grown whatsoever. No improvement to his overall. Maybe he's peaked too early. I'd hate for that to be the case, but it's a plus 16 improvement in three seasons for Job. Now turning 19, he's earned himself a plus five, now standing at 75, running the show with his brother in midfield as they pretty much had similar campaigns. At least Job outscored him, achieving double figures in both departments for the first time in his career. 23 goal contributions, it can do it both the goal scoring playmaker and his box to box older brother with 24 goal contributions. Now the margin is 17 overall points. Job's got a lot of ground to cover. At least Jude gets to boast about his first Mac Dad attribute, 99 stamina. This man will not stop running. Still a teenager in his formative years, his brother still trumps him when it comes to market value at 148.5 million pounds. He's towering over him, now reaching that 10.5 million pound market valuation in the eight figure range receiving a 228% boost but we've got to stop comparing them we've got to allow them to work in tandem achieve success side by side as there are two man midfield was it a bad decision for the brothers career let's see what season four has to offer their second time around in the Premier League and it's a World Cup year ah uh, that's cute Wolves that's cute uh, it really is I don't know if they've latched on to the video concept knowing that if they go after Job they're gonna get Jude as well but I think just another year at Spurs. To you with Champions League football, it's a no-brainer. Trying to lure the Bellingham brothers to Le Molyneux. Yeah, not under my watch, mate. We're kicking off Season 4 with both brothers on new development plans. We've applied Jude with his famous box-to-box -box training. And throughout the summer break, he has also received a plus one. Now standing at a 93. We're hoping to propel him into the 80s. And we have also managed to apply him a couple traits he could use to his advantage. Given four of them are CPU AI only. However, flare passes, long passes, speed 
dribbler, technical dribbler, and playmaker traits are all in his locker. I think this is going to help him reach that next level as his development plan this season is Shadow Striker. We've definitely received some offers of interest over the course of the summer. However, we're going to stick it out one more season at Spurs just to give him a chance. The likes of Hellas Verona are trying to approach Job, and over here with the, we've got the big boys, the Red Devils. But now though, our focus is going to be strictly on Spurs and getting on the plane to the 2026 World Cup. It's a little bit of a mid-season update. We don't do these too often. However, Bellingham has received a little bit of a long-term injury. It's Job, and he's picked up a broken elbow. Getting off to a flyer this season. However, that's going to hold him back. No matter what stage of his career he's at, that midfield just doesn't look the same without him. The hunt for the Bellingham legacy to claim a Premier League title goes on as they lose out the title race to Liverpool by two points. They were in it until the final day. But so often, when it comes to Spurs, they fumble at the final hurdle. Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. Still finishing in third place, a Champions League position as we check on over at the FA Cup. And wow, they've actually done it. The Bellingham brothers might have achieved the biggest thing they're ever going to in their career. They won Spurs a trophy. The FA Cup is coming to White Hart Lane with a 4-1 win over Manchester City at Wembley. We usually take the piss out of Spurs on the channel so much, but this is very unlike the history of the Tottenham. Could they do the domestic double as the Carabao Cup saw Manchester City win? 2-1 over Chelsea and Bellingham Spurs got knocked out to United who put in a bid for Jude in the summer 4-3 on penalties. They came through on the continental scene finishing at top of group H unscathed and all that came to nothing as they dropped out in the round of 16 eliminated to Fiorentina 4-3 on aggregate. Unable to make a real impact in the Champions League but has that season warranted the national team call up? We're going to have to find out. And again Jude has just come through with no improvement whatsoever. Currently in bad form which I'm quite worried about for our captain. He's supposed to be the bigger brother leading by example as one of the world's best and at 22 he is struggling. He's plateauing at the moment. Job has hit that 80 overall. That was the benchmark. That was the main goal this season. He has closed that overall margin down to just 12 points and now he has potential to be special. Warranted his performance this season. He is demanding a new contract with 48 appearances 10 goals and 14 assists. Both Bellingham's in terms of production providing double figures. They can do both. They're dynamic. They're versatile and let's face it they're the future of English football, whether at Tottenham or elsewhere. And attributes wise, the Shadow Striker development plan has done Job a world of good in terms of his training. No maxed out attributes yet, but dribbling's up to a 95. Financially, Job is thriving. The Cam, no longer a teenager, has improved 222%, now valued on the market at 40 million pounds. He is 127 million pounds away from his brother's market value. Unfortunately, a season like that, winning Spurs a trophy, reaching the 80 overall, wasn't enough for Job to be caught up by Gareth Southgate. His brother's left without him. Missing out on the chance to be part of the 26-man squad in a five-star England team. It's going to be hard to crack through. Right now, it looks like Harvey Elliott is his main competition as this is quite a winnable World Cup. Jude having to play without his brother, but they've been drawn in a group with Iceland, Morocco and Canada. So let's see how far the three Lions can go. Now, after finishing top of the group with these nine points, three wins, it's a brutal way to go out. Eliminated in the round of 16, Bellingham's England losing out to Croatia. It's a familiar feeling. Going out early in a major tournament again, how has Southgate been able to keep this job? I don't know as the eventual champions were France winning 3-1 against Brazil in the big dance. It's yet another major international tournament where Bellingham has fired blanks. Four games, zero goals. Jude has contributed merely nothing to the three Lions cause and it just seems like without his younger bro, he's lost. Unless I'm interested to see what kind of offers come through. We've placed him on the transfer list to see what the brothers next destination is going to be. Halfway through the career sim, we're into season 5. You have to really see it to believe it. This is the first time a real big boy has come through for Joe Bellingham. This time Chelsea offering up 57.4 million pounds. It'll be the ultimate trader move, but we also have an offer from Real Madrid. The Galacticos offering up Kochaku plus 118 million pounds. So this Chelsea offer is piquing my interest a little bit more just because I want them to win a Premier League title together. I know this could be controversial but I hope it's for the best. Also, not to spoil anything, we've got a big video with Real Madrid coming up, so we'll spare them for later. He's finally been taken seriously. I guess you guys thought Jude was probably going to be the man initiating most of these transfer moves, or the younger brother would just be following him wherever he goes. But he's put his big boy boots on and attracted some of the elites. Initiated all by Chelsea, 57.4 million, signing on the dotted line and becoming a blue again. Just as his little bro did before him, Jude will be following in the footsteps. You know the rules. It's the career takeover.
the Bellingham brothers stick together. And this is no exception, as they're back in blue, but not Birmingham blue. And picks up his iconic number eight, leaving the number 22 behind for his brother. They'll be linking up in a two-man midfield. It's pretty similar setup to what Spurs has, as we offered up Kai Havertz, plus 93.1 million pounds. It's an overpriced deal. It is an extremely expensive swap deal. Who knows how long the Bellinghams will be staying here, as it's a classic 5-2-3 formation that they're used to. Operating in that midfield duo, Bellingham Jr. slightly pushed further up the pitch in a more advanced position. I thought they were title contenders, Chelsea, but this team is far from it. They might have to carry the Blues in multiple competitions because I'm the furthest thing from confident in their backup brigade. What has been going on? How they still have Lakaka leading the line for them up top is beyond me. I know I traded out Havertz, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Both being applied brand new development plans respectively, Job will be training as an attacking midfielder as Bellingham's just going to be placed on balance. So we're just going to let the training do its thing on all these attributes. Will the brotherly bonds and their form continue at a brand new club? New expectations? There is only one way to find out. Well, 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 we did our bit behind the scenes and managed to get Chelsea a Premier League title. The Bellingham brothers have become English champions together with 98 points sweeping the competition. I know we had our initial doubts, but here they have won the title at Stamford Bridge and what a remarkable feat it was. As over in the FA Cup, they lost out 2-1 to Swansea in round six, so that ended their cup run and over in the Carabao. They didn't make the final either, facing an early elimination to Crystal Palace 2-1, so all their focus was on the league. I didn't realize this before we moved to Chelsea, but there was no European football to focus on. Nothing, not even Conference League. As we take a look at the best performers in the team, it is Jude Bellingham finally living up to his world-class abilities at 23 years of age, being the second top goal scorer with 15 goals and 11 assists. That's 26 goal contributions for the Englishman, as Job himself with 18 goal contributions. He got a juicy plus four. So far, it is the lowest growth he has had in a simulation, which is crazy to think about, but he still has potential to be special. Still 21. With the attacking midfielder development plan, his attributes are starting to come along nicely as financially, he's now valued at 74.5 million pounds. He's just shy of under 100 million pounds away from his brother's market value. Jude, no national team call-ups. That'll be reserved for next year, 2028's Euros. I can feel a sense of stagnation. We might have to throw a spatter in the works, maybe convert their positions into something new entirely, just to try trigger for some more growth. But for now, we'll stay at Chelsea, give the Blues a second shot as Premier League champions and with European football in the mix. It's season six and the Bellinghams are continuing to solidify their midfield legacy as Jude's picked up an upgrade over the summer with a plus one now at a 94. And Jove on his brand new 200k a week contract we hooked him up with will now be training as a shadow striker in attempt to improve those attacking attributes because yeah, his shooting department is nearly worse than his defending. We have some breaking news. Gareth Southgate has seen the light and halfway through season six, Joe Bellingham has been called up to the English national team. For some reason, Jude hasn't joined alongside him, but Job is now an England international. I don't know if he's just experimenting or it's Euro qualifiers, but he's deploying an extremely rotated lineup with the likes of Calvert-Lewin, Madueke. The future's looking bright for England. I still don't know how Mason Mount is getting a starting spot over Jude. That is a crime of the highest order. We've closed the curtains on season six campaign and it's their old employer's Spurs to take home the Prem title. The Bellinghams couldn't defend the championship as Arsenal and Man City both finish above them. They just secure a Champions League spot in fourth and it proved to be that multiple competitions were too much for this Chelsea squad as they did see the likes of some silverware this season though. Taking home the Community Shield 3-2 in a five goal thriller against United at Wembley. Over in the FA Cup, they've actually done a domestic double. Reigning victorious 3-1 against Everton in the big dance and the carrot. Okay, they've done a domestic treble. Forget the Premier League, they were just focused on all the cup competitions this year as the Bellinghams inflict revenge on the old enemy against Spurs in the final on penalties. Chiellini, roll the clip. Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. Whilst capturing a domestic treble, the Bellingham brothers were swimming in silverware and were one game away from making it to a Champions League final. Getting knocked out against PSG 4-2 on aggregate in the semis and that would have set up a perfect Champions League final. However, Spurs take that one out. I guess they get to have the last laugh at the end of the day. As the Holy Grail goes begging, they've still had a decent scrimmage this season with three trophies under their belt. We can now officially confirm that both the brothers are on the plane. They'll be representing England at the 2028 Euros, this time together for the first time on the international scene. But first, we've got to take a look at what they were able to achieve this season, and Jude has now been bumped up to a 95, solidifying himself as one of the world's best. At only 24, he is yet to 
Ferrici's prime. Job carrying the mantelpiece of his big brother's retired number at Birmingham. He's now turned 22 and has reached 88 overall with a nice little plus three, proving himself to be one of Chelsea's main pieces to the puzzle. This time it's 10 goals and eight assists instead of eight goals and 10 assists. Going out there with 52 appearances, 18 goal contributions, eight appearances less than his brother. And I guess these were the kind of performances that captured Southgate's eyes. The captain leading by example with 12 goals and 17 assists. Both the brothers are just smashing it out of the park and now the overall difference is only seven. Considering we started this with 26 overall points of difference, yeah, they've come a long way. Working together in tandem and they've climbed their way to the top. Bellingham's now both valued at over 100 million pounds. Coming off a domestic treble, can England be favourites for the Euro series? In Group D, they are placed inside with Germany, Ukraine and Croatia. An extremely tricky group that they're going to struggle to get out of. I don't know what Southgate's doing over there, tarnishing this experiment because he's called them both up and yet they're not starting in the midfield together. This is clown level behaviour. What am I witnessing? Would you take a look at this after topping the group completely flawless with nine points, making their way out of Group D. They managed to get to the quarterfinals, taking down Italy, inflicting revenge with a 3-1 win and over in the semis completely swept the floor with Belgium. An English masterclass in a 4-1 win and that's landed them in the final. It's a big dance against our rivals Germany and we're going to watch it play out. Just for the final, we're taking over the job. Just to put the Bellinghams in the starting 11 because this England team is a mess. As we'll be quick to in this one, those are the two starting 11s. This is their opportunity not only to be successful at club level but bring their nation success. In a 3-2 win in the final, the Bellinghams unable to get on the score sheet but it's a Rashford goal and a Saka double to get the three Lions over the line and they have brought football home. Look at that. It's Jude in the press conference room flexing that European title. England are the European champions and the player of the tournament was Phil Foden. It's definitely going to be when you do nothing in the group assignment and still get the A grade. Those are the vibes the Bellinghams are giving me right now as no, actually, Job played six appearances, got himself a goal and an assist. Meanwhile, Jude on the other hand with two assists finally getting on the board in an international tournament. Back from international duty, crowned as European champions and no one is safe. We're adding them both to the transfer list to see what new clubs are after them. Who is going to come knocking on the door for the two best brothers in football? Let's wait and see because this summer is going to get interesting. You know what? This would be a heartwarming, wholesome story to finish the video out with. But Borussia Dortmund, we've kind of been there, done that. One of my main rules in life, you can never go back to an ex. It's just never as good the second time around. Europe is next in their sight. So we've got offer from Juve, PSG for Jude Bellingham. Meanwhile, Job, Manchester City have expressed their interest, offering up 138.7 million. But like I said, a move to England or back to Germany would be off the cards. We've just received a slew of offers for Joe. We have the likes of Brentford, Lazio, Hellas Verona, a lot of interest from Italy. Real Madrid again, Milan offering up 276 million. And all roads lead back to Juventus. The Bellinghams will be packing their bags to Italy. They got to claim one final piece of silverware against their former club Spurs in the Community Shield 2-1. Before departing, Stanford Bridge also managed to get three games under their belt with one assist for Jude and Job coming through four assists in three games. That's all about to change here as the deal has been made official. Jude is packing his bags for the Allianz Arena. The final arrangement over £218 million pounds plus a player thrown in the mix. Job spearheaded the last major move for the Bellinghams and now this time Jude's turn to make headlines and bring the Bellingham legacy to a brand new country, a brand new league. It's a tradition as old as time itself right now. The footballing world should adjust. You sign one Bellingham, it's a two package deal. They're two peas in a pod. And Turin get the privilege to welcome two of the best midfielders in the game right now. They've got family ties. This brother combination is unworldly. Bellingham's joining forces. It's a formula. It's a strategy fit for world domination as we agreed to deal 167.5 million pounds. And this is how they'll be lining up in the starting 11, finally playing in a brand new system. Forget five at the back. They're now operating in a three-man midfield with Jude being the box-to-box -box pivot and Job being deployed at that slightly more more advanced role right behind Vlahovic. Can they prove to the world that they can do it anywhere in one of the best defensive leagues known to man? This might also be the perfect environment to just experiment with them a little bit as I want to convert Jude into an attacking midfielder. It's only going to take eight weeks. And Job, we've already been working on his shooting arrangements, but yeah, the center forward is going to take 591 weeks. And striker just looks impossible at the moment, so we're probably just going to have to keep him on shadow striker. Trust me, I've checked. Juve are in the Champions League. The brothers will be playing European football this
this season, guaranteed. The proof is in the pudding, end of season seven, and they're not only English champions, European champions with England, German champions, but they're now adding the Italian title to their list. Taking home the Scudetto with Juventus, 87 points, top of the tree. They are going from success to success, and again, securing an Italian double with the EA Sports Super Cup. A 3-1 win over Inter, and like the charity shield of Italy, let's say, as the Coppa Italia. Okay, it's an Italian treble. Coming off a domestic treble last season, a Euros win with England, and now they have just strolled through Italy, completely unfazed, as over in the Champions League, I think we've got a dream matchup. You couldn't write the script if you wanted to. It is Spurs versus Juve in the big dance 2029. This means more. This is a grudge match. They came out top of their Champions League group. Spurs are looking to go back to back and win another Champions League title. They took down PSG, Manchester City, both clubs that were interested in the Bellingham brothers. And now they have made it to the promised land. Everything they're touching is turning to gold right now. As they're aiming to continue their hot streak and habit to attain and trophies, we're going to quick sim this one just like we did the Euros final to see if they come through successful thanks to a Sancho 85th minute winner. They get the one up on Spurs, inflict revenge and further pain. It's a magical night as the event has become European champions. There he is, it's the treble secured, this time the proper treble. Or if you want to be super specific, it's the quadruple. Next on their checklist, I guess, is the World Cup, which is next year, by the way. 2030 is fast approaching, but let's take a look and see how they performed in season eight. And we have Jude Bellingham completely blowing Job out the water. He's actually stepped up to the plate and it's the first real season where he's just completely outperformed his younger brother, showing him how it's done. At 25, approaching his prime with 55 appearances, he scored 31 goals and 14 assists. These are Ballon d'Or-esque numbers. Production levels are at an all-time high with 45 goal contributions. He's from another planet. He is not human. Now up to a 96 overall. Meanwhile, Job not growing whatsoever. Nonetheless, we're probably going to have to fidget around a little bit more with his training with 10 goals and five assists. He needs to up those numbers. For now though, we're going to have to actually convert him. He didn't receive an upgrade, but what that does allow is us to change it to a double cam system so that they can both get the game time. 99 vision, 99 attack positioning. These attributes are golden. 98 sprint speed is the closest thing Job has to maxing out his second attribute. And in terms of market valuation, Job has dropped down to 90 million pounds, seen an 18% decrease and is out of the nine figure range. Meanwhile, Job has hit that 200 million pound mark. Let's hope that motivates Job and he can make a little bit of a comeback in Season 8, a World Cup year. Here's the current setup at Juve heading into their 8th season together side by side. It's same, same but different. It's a 4-5-1 attacking system with two operating cams. With his older brother on the right both feeding balls into the goal-hungry Vlahovic, this is a recipe for success. With Jude on dynamo training and Shadow Striker applied to Job. It's in the Bellingham DNA at this point. We have grown two absolute midfield monsters. They've gone back to back Italian champions Serie A taking home again with 105 points it's too easy out here for them doing what they do best and taking home the Italian Super Cup and over in the Coppa Italia okay they go without that trophy this season losing out in the quarterfinals to Atalanta 2-1 they attain the Champions League trophy I just simulated towards the end of the season and they made it their 3-1 win against City in the final again another English opposition and a team which haven't shied away from their interest in both Bellingham brothers they actually finished second to their group losing out three times this is our main point of focus though the 2030 world cup got no idea where this is hosted but the three lines been drawn into group b alongside wales qatar and canada if they're not topping this group something's wrong it's just routine at this stage they've both been caught up to the world cup squad on the plane but how did they perform for juve this season as jude is up to a 97 growing steadily to the maxed out range as he's achieved perfect balance 19 goals 19 assists 38 goal contributions in 55 appearances Meanwhile, Job's just happy out here with his 10 goals and 8 assists, 18 goal contributions for the younger brother. Receiving a plus 2, also hitting a little bit of a plateau with stagnation, but he's reached one of the world's best. Damn, I actually should have checked if Bellingham won the Ballon d'Or last season for 2029, but that's besides the point. It's all about their teamwork and cooperation, as in terms of attributes, sprint speed has been maxed out for Job at 99. I've seen him now valued at 118.5. Meanwhile, Jude is literally in his own stratosphere right now, 231 million pounds. 
chance. They are now truly devoted in the England national team. Both Bellinghams run in the midfield and it's going to be a surgical summer. We've made it. We're into the summer of 2030 and we've reached the end game, people. The Englands have made it to a World Cup final against Ghana. The Black Stars doing Africa proud, going one further than Morocco and this is how England made it. When I thought they'd finish top of the group, they come through in second, undefeated with five points, losing out to Canada in the round of 16. They were matched up against France and won 3-2 in a five-goal thriller. Taking it home against Argentina, the 2022 world champions in a 2-1 win and over in the semis, knocking out 2026's European champions, the Netherlands, 2-0. It has been a long and treacherous road to the final, but here we are, the Bellingham brothers with the opportunity of a lifetime. And we're going to go ahead and play this one in real time just to see how they play in-game. These are their current stats for the World Cup so far. Job with one goal in six appearances and then his brother getting himself two assists and a goal to his name. Here's how England's lining up in the Bellingham's biggest game of their careers. We've made it this far and these are the lineups going to battle tonight. They've pretty much ticked everything off their bucket list when it comes to club achievements, Champions League titles, league titles, domestic cup silverware and now it all comes down to this one final moment for the national team. Going to battle with Ghana who are looking to complete the fairy tale. Jude Bellingham leads the three Lions out and is keen to get his hands on the world's biggest trophy, football's biggest prize. Let's bring it home as Tammy Abraham kicks us off. Here we go. Jude Bellingham into the path of Abraham. Nice little back heel. Can Job set the, something up here as Tammy Abraham tries to waltz through this defense. He tries to cut back inside, trying to find the sweaty option across goal. And it's Phil Foden. The Bellingham's not really having much to do in the opening goal. And the three Lions within 10 minutes get the scores open and break the deadlock. Job setting up the counter attack with that through ball into Tammy. But he did the rest and set up big Fodzi. Oh, Tamori completely misses the tackle and Ramsdale has to come out and will this be time <laughs> oh dude getting sent in the shadow realm leading by example Saka with some supreme dribbling into the path of Phil Foden back on over to Job and he takes a strike at goal but the keeper denies him here we go again now it's Jude's turn. Jude with his five-star week foot fires over the bar. Now a nice little one-two with Tammy Abraham would go a long way. And Jude Bellingham now one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Ziggy with another super stop. Corner into the mix. Can Bellingham set something up from this set-piece situation? And he does. I think it's an own goal. But Saka will be the one to claim it. It's an assist for Jude at the World Cup final. And all the boys getting around him. Dangerous from the set-piece. And it's Job also getting involved in the celebrations. It was a beautiful delivery. And Saka made sure to deal with the rest. The man on the line couldn't clear. And it will, in fact, go down as an empty own goal. Ghana go 2-0 down in quick succession as they're trying to find a way in. Elegantly moves on the pitch as Job can set up his brother here. It would be a story like no other as Jude cuts back inside our number eight for the third. And they are running rampant on Ghana at the moment. In the 29th minute, the captain absolutely strikes one into the top left-hand corner. And guess who assists him? It's his younger brother with the setup as he cuts back inside, fools his defenders into the upper echelons of the net. It's the Bellingham show here at this World Cup final. And we are just here watching, admiring from the sidelines. Offloads to Declan Rice. As he cuts back, Jude now over to his younger brother, Job, and he nearly cracks open the fourth right before half time. Oh no, Jude's gone down, our captain. Mayday, mayday. We are in panic stations at the moment. And one light tackle later, and oh my goodness me, it is gone from a dream to a nightmare just like that. Bellingham's gonna have to be forced off. It was barely even a tough challenge. The dream fairy tale is ruined. He's not gonna pick up his World Cup final trophy. Bob from down the pub could take a challenge harder than that. But can Job? get a goal in the final to avenge his brother and get the fourth and no Ziggy doing his best to spoil the party as Ghana charge forward Job on the cutback and he completely breaks through the back of Kudu so he gets up straight away he's without his big bro showing him the ropes as Job ball over the top through to Phil Foden for the fourth and Foden gets his double it could have been Jude on the other end but I think that confirms it England World Cup champions of 2030. We're going to get the result, just not the trophy celebration we were after. It was a routine victory in the end for the three Lions. And they bring home the World Cup for the first time since 1966. It was Bellingham Jr. who couldn't get his World Cup final goal. But at least Jude did. He went off on a stretcher. He went out like a hero fighting for his country. And that'll bring to a close the Bellingham career takeover. We have fought long, hard, eight seasons, multiple international tournaments. The brothers both achieving success together. And that's a satisfying 
Lampard, creating a legacy for themselves, a dynasty that I'm sure would last even longer the more we seemed into the future. Now they both get to lift the World Cup trophy high, take home their World Cup champions winners medals. Let me know down in the comments below what other brotherly wonder kid combinations should we experiment here with in FIFA 23 as they go ahead and lift up the trophy. It's Alexander Arnold to take the moment away from Jude. As the Bellingham brothers achieve world domination together, if you did go on and enjoy, make sure to drop the video a like down below, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications. As the content is coming out thick and fast, let me know down in the comments below what other videos you want to see on the channel. Guys, have your say. Did you expect a little bit more out of their careers, their production? Were you dissatisfied with their career moves? Let me know. Follow me on all my socials. The links will be down in the description below. But as always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.